All right, so we are live. Yay. Hi. Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm good, Channing. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. Good. So we're here to talk about queer astrology, the Queer Astrology yeah. Conference. We are. We are. Um, Sam. Yes, ma'am. How are you presenting at the Queer Astrology Conference? I am. Did you say what am I presenting or how am I presenting? Like, what drew you to presenting at the Queer Astrology Conference? Oh, well, I'm all about creating multiple narratives within spectrums of cultural discourse like astrology mm -hmm. and right now we would both agree that the, the the discourse is very narrow um you know when i go to different astrology conferences i almost feel like there are 20 set charts that people look at most of them are white and most of them are straight <laughs> And I feel like we want to stretch the conversation, not just in terms of what kind of charts we do, but who we talk about and what we talk about um, with everyone there. So that's kind of the, the thing that, you know, why I'm excited about the Queer Astrology Conference. You know, it's so interesting. I love that you said multiple narratives. I just like that makes me so excited because we're human beings and within each of our narratives, we have like a multiple narratives with each, within the one that we have even. Mm -hmm. um, which I think queer is like a kind of catch-all phrase of, of articulating that. But what I also really loved about what you said is when you go to regular astrology conferences, and there's a set amount of uh, a set, you know, the they, they come from the same binder. Right. But it's, even if there wasn't, even if they were going to present on like someone like Marsha P. Johnson or some other like queer icon, as a, I, I don't necessarily. There's also a set uh, kind of constituency of presenters that might also be from one kind of uh, particularly particular situation in that's life. true mm -hmm. um, and so like what I find really frustrating is that the conversation never steers towards being critical about race class gender gender expression um, uh, ability orientation or location like how we're situated within the class structures within all the structures that we're placed within because of you know how systems work so that's why i'm so interested in in what you were saying because it because we get to in this hopefully in the queer astrology conference my hope is that we get to dive into some of that material and that we get to we're, that i for one really want to encourage people that come with um that lens and want to have those conversations right and I, I just have to kind of chime in i actually was invited to go on a radio station a radio show and talk about black on black love and i had an interesting moment on twitter and i was talking about it and someone checked me rightly so and said okay are you just going to talk about het stories you know or you know are you just going to talk about celebrity charts or het normatives and i i had to realize like okay i didn't have a lot in mind specifically but i made it a point to make sure to talk about the different swaths of understanding love and black on black love um since that was the topic but not assuming that it would be just completely heterosexual so i think that's another important element to what you're saying in terms of talking about astrology stretching the public conversation yeah that we have multiple narratives within any context that we're talking about um that each community within itself is like multiple communities within each you know however we think of grouping people together which is also be problematic but right that's great and then also hopefully you know the people that are drawn to a queer astrology conference like the presenters are open to being checked and open to being called in or open to being like you know having a dialogue that that i'm you know i'm going as a person who's who's dedicated the, the majority of my life to studying something that i love and so i'm going to be presenting from my knowledge but i'm also going as someone who wants to learn a lot from the other people that are coming not just the presenters, but also the participants and what they, their life experience and what they're bringing and their expertise and their knowledge and their, their inquiries, I think, are what's fascinating to me. Right. That, I think a lot of people don't get that about identity politics. They think just because either you're that particular identity or you're an ally, then that makes you the authority. It's an evolving process of learning. Yeah. You know, and I'm an ally. I'm not identified as queer. But I definitely support that. But I also recognize that even though I'm not part of the identity, quote unquote, that I still have a lot to learn. But I also recognize there's some people who are queer and like, yo, you don't know a lot right now. 
who might benefit from also learning um, more about the swath of understanding that, that dimension of life. Right, right. So tell me, can you tell me a little bit about what you're presenting? Yeah, I'm talking about, the, the title of my talk is called The Semenya Moment, and that's inspired by the runner, Castor, the South African runner, Castor Semenya, and what happened to her a few years back where she actually had her um, medals um, awards taken away from her because there was a question about her sexuality and specific, yeah, specifically because she's intersexed. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered in my research is that there are a good number of women of color in women's races mm -hmm. who are somehow pinpointed as being problematic with their quote unquote intersexuality. Mm -hmm. And that made me think about the, the legacy on, from an astrological point of view of Mercury. Mm -hmm. So my talk is going to focus in on the intersections between intersexuality, gender, colonialism, power, competitiveness, and astrology. So I'll look at astrology charts and also look at the, the archetypal nature of Mercury as part of my talk. I love it. That sounds fascinating. Um, and, and how timely right now, especially with like what's happening with Bruce Jenner and like oh yeah I'm definitely I, I just really know I not just now but I mean I realize is now he's yeah. possibly coming out because I'm not proclaiming anything until Bruce proclaims something but um if he is going along that trajectory I, I think it's very timely in terms of revealing that and given his history yeah. so I think he has a, a great story to tell yeah and just how just how people in the media are handling it and the, I mean, the, the amazing insensitivity and, and ignorance that goes along with um, mm -hmm. thinking that anybody can talk about anybody else's body is just like um, beyond me. <laughs> but also something that, you know, we can kind of bring up in terms of looking at it through an astrological lens. Absolutely. How the, what the astrology was when all of that went down. Mm -hmm. um, and what about you? What are you talking about? Well... My talk is entitled Decolonizing the Sky. So I'm really interested, <laughs> a giant topic. I'm really interested in getting folks interested in their history as astrologers because we have this amazing, complex, and multifaceted and multicultural um, history that goes back really to the dawn of time from the time we could really make sense of the difference between dark and light and sun and moon. Right. And and then associate meaning with a symbol in the sky, round and then fluctuating as the moon does. Um, and then the history of how that evolves into what we now call astrology. And I feel like for me as, a, uh, as an astrologer, I was really disassociated from the roots of astrology for so long. And um, just having the Greco-Roman pantheon to, to lean on or to understand um, the, uh, the planets is, is also multifaceted and complex and beautiful, but that it's, that there's so much more than that. And that even that system is, is standing on the shoulders of, of other things that are way older. Right. Um, and so I really, I'm interested in getting people, I'm only, you know, I'm going to do like an introduction to an introduction, um, and do like a, you know, 3000 years of history in an hour. Right. <laughs> so it'll be, you know, <laughs> hey. um, in people's mouths, I want to give people a little appetizer to get interested in their history because I think decolonizing um, education, information uh, is so essential in whatever we do. If we're going to queer something, then we want to look at the roots of it and like how have things been obscured, like how has how have um, how has Arabic culture been obscured through an astrological lens, or how has it been relegated to the outskirts, or um, how have you know folks from different parts of the world because of colonialism because of racism because of um, Islamophobia how have different parts of astrology how's that been hidden or or misunderstood or um, co-opted and like half-baked like you know the lots um, the lots of fortune lot of spirit, mm -hmm. all the lot uh, so they just have this fascinating um, history that's been handed down and swapped hands and um, hidden and then reemerges and then broken off and then comes back together and right now we're standing in this moment where we have so many of the texts that are being translated and really um, you know thought about and deconstructed by some very amazing academics 
Um, and so we've got all of this knowledge all of a sudden, I think, in the last 20, 30 years that we didn't have before. And so I just want to get, I'm just, I'm interested in it. And so that's what I'm passionate about. So I want to pass it. Are you going to talk really, 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 really fast? <laughs> Did I? No, 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 you didn't. I'm just trying to get it all within an hour because that's, that's kind of, right. So I'm going to do a broad, you know, a broad thing that hopefully, um, I want to bring out some of the elements that have been more, to me, that were more hidden that I found really interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, we're starting a, we're continuing and starting conversations, and that's what we hope to yeah. uh, draw people into. Um, in fact, we should mention when and where this conference is happening. So it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's March 20th through the, I always get the dates, it's the 22nd? Yes, 20, 21, and 22. Right, through the 22nd right. in San Francisco, California. After the last Uranus Pluto square. Right. Okay. Right. And the eclipse, the solar eclipse, right on the solar Next eclipse. To the solar, why not? Why right. not the solar eclipse? Um, so. In San Francisco, uh, you can go to queerastrology.com to get tickets. And also, if you just are, feel like you want to, um, if you want to sponsor somebody, you can donate money and have um, somebody who, you know, needs a scholarship to get into the conference um, to get there. That would be great, too. We're having a, a fundraising campaign that's happening on the site. And there's an anthology. Are you in the anthology? You know, we're having a second part of the anthology come out, but there is there is a volume one of the anthology from the 2013 conference. And are you in that as well? I'm, or Yeah, I'm in the second part. I did a okay. talk with Lilith. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then we will be in the next anthology. And there's some great presenter, presenters. Christopher Reinstrom is going to be there. Yeah, he's a great historian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Barry Perlman's going to be there. Jessica Moniato. Who's Barry Perlman? Who is Barry? Astro oh, Barry. Barry, right. Yeah, so Astro Barry. You might know him as Astro Barry, so he's going to be there. Um, Lawrence Jones. Lawrence Joseph Jones is going to be there doing an amazing thing on um, the history of, of Motown music. Um, mm -hmm. Not the history, but uh, a couple of specific examples. And Diego Basteo Diego is going to be there um, doing something about the death of queer culture, which will be fascinating. And also Shunga Teg Tagore. I was just thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about performance, uh, about telling one's story. And um, Jessica Laniadu is going to be there. Yeah, she's going to do stuff on intimacy. Um, did we get everybody? Um, I don't know Cassie Thornton and Stella right. Lawson. That's right. They are going to be there doing stuff on economics and class. And right. Issues around uh, structural uh, economic inequality. Right. So yeah. I think we have everyone. We have it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah be we, just need, we just need everybody else to come. Yes. And make it a phenomenal event and bring your politics and bring your questions and bring your expertise and bring your hearts. Right. Um, we'll have some fun. And how can people learn more about you, Tani? Well, you can go to channynicholas.com, C-H-A-N-I-N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S.com. I write weekly horoscopes and new moon and full moon posts and other stuff on there and how can people find out about you Samuel? at unlockastrology.com and you also can email me at unlockastrology at gmail.com but i'm at unlockastrology.com nice nice beautiful so cool well okay. thank you so yeah come and check us out folks we're fun all right yeah right the fun is just beginning <laughs> all right thank you thank you hold on one second